I'm not sure why people find it difficult to ask for help. Well, I know for myself, sometimes I think, I can get through this, I can do it, I don't recognize that I need help. So that's probably one reason. But I think from other times, people think that needing help or asking for help represents some sort of failure and they don't want to admit that they failed in some way or it, it, it represents some sort of moral defect that, you know, we should be strong individuals who pick ourselves up by our bootstraps or some other nonsense like that. Whenever things fall apart in our life, we often need the assistance of others. We need their support, we need their help. And it's really important for us to be able to ask for the help we need and to recognize some of what that looks like. You know, I've had the experience of things falling apart in my life. In a previous video, I talked about living in an apartment building where there was a fire and losing most of my things because of smoke and water damage. There was another time when I was working as clinical director for a large counseling agency and things fell apart through malfeasance. The people managing the money didn't lost the money, all kinds of complicated things. And I walked in one Monday morning to find I didn't have a job and needed to notify my staff that they didn't have jobs. Things fall apart, not because of us, not because of our moral failures, but because of situations around us. Things happen. And when things fall apart, it's important to reach out to others, people who can be there with us to support us and to help us, to be a positive presence in our life. When my mother died, after we'd cared for her at home for five years, she was blind and, and had very, very minimal mobility. So I was really exhausted after five years of caring for her as well as being in grief over her death. A good friend of mine came and visited and spent a few days. He didn't try to solve any problems. He didn't tell me what to do. He was with me and listened. And I know that during that time, I must have talked in circles and said the same things over and over and over again. And he was very patient with me and just listened and was there. That's the kind of help we need. People who are able to be there to simply listen, to be present with us in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of feeling overwhelmed. A colleague of mine at the same time kept asking, what can I do? I wanna do something, let me help, let me do something. And I finally said, why don't you just meet me one afternoon for coffee? I need to get out and start being a little more social again. That would be great. So we went for coffee and I was, was looking forward to just going out and, and hanging out and being sociable. And within a few minutes, he began telling me all the things I needed to do, all the things I should be experiencing, all the things about my mother that I should remember. And it was all telling me about what to do. As I sat there in the conversation, I felt more and more frustrated. And I made our visit a little shorter than I would have because I was just getting angry. I wanted somebody to simply be there with me. And he was telling me how to understand my own experience without listening to me at all. That's the kind of help we don't need. It's important for each of us to learn to be friends to each other who listen who are present, who are patient with each other, and are there not to provide advice, but to be supportive. Those kinds of friends are invaluable when things fall apart for us. One of the things we may also need when things fall apart, is some sort of professional help, and that will depend on the context and what we're going through. But when we're feeling really overwhelmed and not sure what to do and having all kinds of feelings we can't sort out because things have fallen apart, as have happened for many people during the COVID pandemic, it's important to connect with a mental health provider. Connecting early with a mental health provider to sort out some of these crazy emotions that, that we're not sure what to make of that really will help prevent us from slipping into depression or an anxiety disorder or some other kind of mental disorder. So it's really helpful to get that 
help early on or as soon as we recognize that we need it. Don't shy away from it. Depending on, on what's happened that things have fallen apart, like if it's job and career oriented, maybe what we need to do is talk to a career counselor, a job coach, or some other kind of job specialist to sort out what would be most helpful for us as a next step. Maybe we don't want to rush in and just get the next available job that was like the job we had. Maybe it will be better for us to look for broader opportunities or to consider some other things that would be really helpful and more fulfilling for us. That's a great time to use those services. And sometimes when things fall apart, we're left with all kinds of questions about our lives. Why am I here? What am I doing? What's this all about? We're asking the existential questions when life falls apart. And that's a great time to begin working with a spiritual director. A spiritual director who will listen and help us sort out who we are most deeply and what life is really all about for us. And help us to draw on those resources and, and get a sense of moving forward. Because when life falls apart, what we're really doing is moving from the experience of total disorientation because life has fallen apart, the experience of being overwhelmed and not being sure what to do, and then moving towards a new orientation where our life is going to take on some different dimensions. That's a process that's going to take time, and we need support in that process. In this series of four videos, I've talked about that experience of life falling apart and of these interrelated pieces that come together that help us move through life falling apart. The first was the recognition that nothing in life lasts forever, that everything's changing, that life is impermanent, and that when things fall apart, we're experiencing everything changing quickly but it's still the natural cycle that things will change and come to an end. When we have that perspective, we're better, better able to move through life, uh, life events and things fall apart. Secondly, having developed an interior life, a sense of who we are through spiritual practice, art, nature, crafts, other things that draw us inwardly. When we have that, when things fall apart, we know where we're grounded. We know where our roots are. And so that we can go back to those roots and find ourselves and find the resilience we need. And the third is really finding the support of others, both close friends and people we can trust, as well as professional folks. All of those things are an important part of reorienting our life in a new way after things fall apart. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video. Of course, share this series with other people because we all experience life falling apart and click that bell so you're notified of future videos. And please be sure that I understand the experience of life falling apart. It's happened for me. And know that I really appreciate that you took time to be with me today. Thanks and have a great day.